When diagnosing fuel trim issues, we have short term and long term. Why are there two? Which one should you follow? And what are the differences? First, a comparison. If you ever had a medical issue that required you to go for multiple visits, doctors, clinics, procedures, whatever, the first thing you always do is get your vital signs. This includes your blood pressure, your weight, temperature, pulse, and even your oxygen level. These vital signs are indicators of how your body is functioning. If any of those are not normal, they indicate that something needs a closer look. So, what does all this have to do with fuel trim? Well, fuel trim is the vital signs of your engine. It indicates if the fuel mixture is rich or lean. Now let's quickly review how fuel trim works. When the piston goes down, it creates a negative pressure and that draws in fresh air. At the same time, the PCM commands a fuel injector to spray fuel and that is drawn into the piston chamber with the fresh air. At the right time, the PCM sends a spark to ignite it and there is combustion. The exhaust valve opens, the piston pushes all of that out the exhaust and past the oxygen sensor whose job it is to report how much oxygen is in the exhaust and it reports it to the PCM so that the PCM can recalculate for the next combustion cycle that follows immediately and it either increases or decreases how much fuel is needed to balance the fuel mixture. This whole process repeats itself for each cycle using the recalculated adjustments. Of course this repeating happens very very fast. In fact it happens with each breath a piston takes and the PCM calculates, recalculates with each breath. Add in the fact that the engine may have four, six, or eight cylinders. You drive at different speeds under various conditions. You can see how fast this recalculating actually is. Now let me rephrase that. You can see how fast this short-term fuel recalculating actually is. The key word being short. And it looks like this. The top shows the O2 switching and the bottom shows the short-term switching. Notice that even though the top shows millivolts and the bottom shows percentages, the patterns are very similar. Now here's another look. Take a second look at this. This has two traces and they are overlaid on top of each other. The blue line is the short-term recalculating. The graph changes every time the PCM adds or subtracts fuel. It recalculates very fast. How does the PCM add or subtract fuel? By increasing or decreasing the injector on time. Notice on the left side you see the numbers increasing or decreasing from zero as the graph moves through time. The injector on time is constantly increasing or decreasing by varying percentage amounts. Now the red line is the long-term recalculating. Yes, long-term fuel trim recalculates also. Now look at this again. The red line may look like it is recalculating slower than the blue line, but it is not slower. It is just not as often and in smaller intervals. Now remember, the blue short-term recalculates with each breath and the red, which is the long-term, recalculates every time that the short-term exceeds its 10% limit. More on that in a second. So over the same time period, the recalculating frequency is different because the causes for that recalculation is different. Now, the long-term fuel trim does not change the injector on time directly. It changes the trim strategy. Trim strategy, what is that? Well, strategy is thinking through a problem ahead of time, making a plan of action to manage that air fuel mixture, and the goal of all this is stoichiometric 14.7 to 1, or a balanced air fuel mixture. Now, this is achieved through what is called fuel mapping. Driving conditions and habits are always changing. When the vehicle is designed, the engineers know this. They plan ahead for it. They make a plan. They look at all of the input data. That could be mass airflow, O2, TPS, map, 
and the vehicle speed sensor. They've considered all the possibilities and they created the fuel maps, sometimes referred to as fuel tables. Now, fortunately for us, they have done all the math ahead of time. Here is a typical fuel map and what it looks like. Notice that 14.7 to 1 appears right in the very middle and at other points on the map. Each cell contains a different set of instructions on how to manage the changing air fuel mixture based on the changing load and RPM. Notice the load percentages goes across the top and the RPM goes across the side. This pre-planned strategies they are changing as your driving changes. Now remember long-term fuel trim does not directly change the fuel injector pulse width. It changes the strategy to achieve the stoichiometric 14.7 to 1. And the instructions on how to do that are pre-calculated inside each cell. So the red term, which is the long-term fuel trim, changes the cell every time that the short term exceeds its 10% limit. Either positively it would add more fuel or negatively it would take fuel away. With the goal always being to achieve balance stoichiometric 14.7 to 1. Now remember I said the short term recalculated with every breath of the engine and it can do that all day long. In fact it's supposed to but it is limited in how much of an adjustment it can make. So, the short-term fuel trim is the PCM trying to balance the air-fuel mixture as you drive. Again, the goal of balance is a perfect stoichiometric 14.7 to 1. Now, since it is perfectly balanced, no fuel is added or subtracted, and the percentage is zero. No adjustment is needed, but when we have a lean exhaust, the PCM issues a go-rich command, and it adds fuel. If we have a rich exhaust, the PCM issues a go lean command and the PCM then subtracts fuel. Now remember I said it can do this all day long, in fact it's supposed to, within limits. And those limits are a plus or minus 10%. That means there is an acceptable 10% limit in this graph and I've colored that acceptable 10% limit in. Any adjustment more or less than 10% exceeds the limits of the short-term fuel trim. And then the long-term fuel trim will step in to help. At this point, the long-term will change the cell strategy. And this strategy changes as needed to gain control and balance the air-fuel mixture. And the short-term will reset to zero and continue to make rapid adjustments until it reaches its limit of 10% again. Now this continues until the combined adjustment of both the short term and long term are above 10% and the fuel mixture is balanced. Now let's watch how this works in the same graph when we slow it down. So as the engine runs and develops a lean condition, the PCM will add 2% to enrich the fuel mixture. It's going to recalculate. Since we just added fuel, it's going to be rich so the PCM is going to subtract fuel. The PCM will recalculate and since it just subtracted fuel now it is going to add fuel again to achieve the balance. It recalculates and now might subtract 7%. It'll recalculate and might need to add 8%. It'll recalculate and let's say it needs to subtract 9%. It will recalculate again may add 10%. Now it's going to recalculate and let's say it adds or subtracts 13%. Now it has gone over the 10% limit. The long-term fuel trim cell has been monitoring watching this all the time, but it has been making no strategy adjustments because it has achieved its 14.71 balance. The short-term fuel trim will reset back to zero and it starts adjusting again. Now for the purposes of illustrating this, I'm going to make some simple assumptions here. The real percentages will vary as the problem and or the driving conditions vary, but it continues to add or subtract trying to balance the fuel until it exceeds the 10% limit. That's when it will set a code. 
Now it changes the strategy because the other strategy was not balancing. They would change to a new strategy, to a new set of pre-calculated instructions. Now it will do this over and over again as long as the engine is running. The PCMs do a very good job of managing the air-fuel mixture. All of this recalculating and fuel cell strategy changes go on without us even being aware of it, usually, but sometimes the PCM just can't keep it balanced and that's when the check engine light comes on, making us aware of the problem. So, why long-term fuel trim should be the first data PID that you look at? Because it is the vital signs of how your engine is functioning. Instead of wondering what to spend your time on or what to check first, if you look at the long-term fuel trim first, you'll know if the PCM is successfully doing its job or struggling to keep the air-fuel mixture balanced. If it is struggling, it indicates that the fuel mixture is either rich or lean, and you'll know which side of the struggle we need to focus on. Why is it rich or why is it lean? So, a short-term adjustment won't turn on the check engine light. Long-term will, however, and give you an indication of how severe a problem we really do have. So be sure to focus on and work to fix what's causing the PCM to struggle with the long-term fuel trimming.